we are off, we are out of here. This is us leaving the marina after quite some time. <laughs> If you've been watching our new podcast series, you'll know that we have already left Kota Kinabalu, as is evident by this very noisy and very busy port uh, just down the coast of Borneo. Uh, but before we embark on our 1500 nautical mile journey, we did have a few boat maintenance issues to attend to. And actually, we did already leave the marina of sorts. Uh, we're just going to go out to anchor. Basically what I want to do is just run all the systems, make sure everything is okay before our eventual departure. I don't want any last minute surprises so we're just, uh, we're just going to go out to anchor just by the village over there and make sure nothing falls off the boat that shouldn't, including Liz. So we've just popped into a little fishing village which is one of Sharon and Lindsay's favourite spots. Um, I think normally under normal circumstances it would be fine but we've got a fishing boat here at anchor who's playing with these nets. Uh, we are surrounded by reefs so it's just a little bit close. I think if this was our only option we would just happily anchor here. Um, but because uh, we have another option to anchor just outside which is still protected by reefs then I think we'll go for that instead. Um, we don't plan to go ashore anyway so it, it's not a big deal really but you can see uh, we're now just going through a channel right now there's a reef just over on our starboard side and uh, this is the uh, fishing boat to anchor here Just turn around and follow our track out. Because we can't see the reefs when we're pointing this way because we've got the sun in the wrong direction. And that's it, back to the marina. <laughs> we literally, we spent two nights at anchor. We haven't done anything except uh, do video work and check a few things. The only thing I did do is I had to go down to the prop despite putting uh, prop one on, the anti-foul for propellers, uh, it seemed to have lasted only a season because when I went down there to check, uh, it was covered in barnacles, which I suspected when we left the marina. I didn't have a great amount of steerage or torque. So uh, yeah, anyway, it's Saturday morning. We are surrounded by jet skis, banana boats. Uh, it's the weekend, isn't it? So everyone's out on the water. So we need to go back. We need to uh, fill up with fuel, but more importantly, we had there's a little issue with the generator, so I need to go and get that serviced. It's not putting out full power. Um, it's about two thirds, so uh, we need to get back into town and uh, get that up there because we are running out of time before our eventual departure. After visiting the fuel jetty in the marina to fill up with diesel, I'm happy to report that we were able to get the generator fixed and all just before everything closed down for Lunar New Year celebrations. Meanwhile, back on board Esper. Just been up the mast again this morning, this time up the main mast uh, because we have an issue with our steaming light, which hasn't been working for a while. Uh, the main problem we've got with trying to replace the steaming light is that it's one of these units that wraps around the mast, like so, so it follows the contour of the mast. And it's a two-in-one light, so it's a deck floodlight and a steaming light. Uh, the deck floodlight stopped working ages ago and I, I don't know why. Uh, I checked the voltage when I was up there and didn't seem to be getting anything so I'm not sure what's happening but it doesn't matter anyway because the replacement that I have is a heller light uh, which has to be mounted on a flat surface. So what I was originally going to do was to get a new bracket made up to follow the contour of the mast with a flat plate on the front so that I could mount this and then I realised well why not just use the old uh, 
plastic plate from the original fitting. It's a lot easier and it saves a bit of money. So all I've done is literally rivet on the housing like so and then I can run the two cables up these contours here to meet the cable that comes out the mast. Um, I'll have to cap off the uh, third cable of course but um, that's a pretty straightforward job so I'm quite pleased about that um, and it's basically a case of just wiring it back up there and uh, riveting this back onto the mast so that's good. So with all these little boat maintenance jobs finally ticked off the list that left one last big job to do and that's the installation of our new lithium batteries. Now this required some thinking because we didn't have any space left in our current battery bank compartment. Little battery update for you. We have decided to add another uh, 200 amp hours to our lithium battery bank and unfortunately we don't have space to put the new uh, set next to the old one so we've had to be a bit creative and work out where to put the new set and I realized that our old freezer which is a obviously a contained uh, cool box which sits under the seat over my shoulder could make a good spot um, it's a bit of a long run it's about uh, th what two and a half three meters direct to the battery from the new batteries to the old ones which is not ideal but uh, we've ordered some very thick cable, the thickest uh, cable that we could find in order to make that run. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm just drilling a couple of holes in the bottom of the old uh, fridge unit uh, to run those cables through. Right, it's managed to run the cable. So I don't know how much you can see. Just down in the corner there. So the cables are running down this corner here. I was able to successfully drill out the old drain for the fridge freezer compartment. Uh, most of the material of course is just the foam insulation so there wasn't much actually to drill through it was just quite deep. So I've run the cable along the bottom here and uh, I've now managed to feed it up into the um, battery compartment so you can just see that there. So that's the that's the big physical bit out the way. There's of course all the wiring to do and I've just been looking up the balancers and um, the balancers are basically mounted on the positive terminal of each battery, sorry the negative terminal and then there's a bigger thicker cable that goes to the positive terminal but then there's a loop so all of the um, balancers are connected in a daisy chain and that's the thing I'm trying to get my head around. So I've got in touch with Paul from Octopus who uh, originally installed this just to get a reminder of what to do. But anyway, so the big stuff is now done. That's all in situ. We'll have to go around the houses for a bit. They're finally here, shipped by sea. And um, we're about to open them and check that everything is in there that I hope that is in there, which should be four batteries and of course some copper plate connectors and uh, maybe some uh, bolts as well. So let's have a look. <laughs> That's it, done. We are back online and we now have an extra 200 amp hours of battery capacity, which is great. So uh, we had a bit of a scare at one point because when we um, put everything back online, the inverter charger wasn't uh, starting. And um, not, it didn't make sense because we were sh pretty sure that we had wired everything up. I say we, uh, this is a schematic that I got off Paul Bushel who originally installed the system and uh, I got hands to help me today because my Achilles heel is soldering. It's something I've never really quite mastered much as I've practiced and we had to solder some very thin uh, cables to the balancers and uh, it required good soldering skills so I got hands to come in and help me but anyway once we had uh, wired everything up and tried to turn everything back on it nothing turns on well this is not the first time it's happened and if you have a similar system the Victron system uh, what I found was I had to disconnect the Ethernet cable from the back of the color control unit and then just plug it back in again it's as if there's some kind of remote override in the network 
that gets permanently turned off when you turn off the system. So by rebooting the network, i.e. disconnecting and reconnecting that Ethernet cable, um, it was able to turn the system back on. So now we are charging up and as you know we have 380 amp hours down there and we have an additional 200 amp hours in the new uh, box which is our old freezer compartment. So now that that's all up and running, don't celebrate too soon. Turns out one of the cells is faulty and uh, it took me about, I don't know, 24 hours of solid testing to work out that one of the cells was actually taking too much of a charge too quickly. So while the others sat at 3.3 uh, to 3.5 volts, this one was shooting up. It was hitting 3.8 volts. Now at that point the balancers are designed to shut down the whole system and that's exactly what they were doing. So I had a bit of a backwards and forwards with the uh, vendor uh, who kept telling me that I was doing something wrong but no, tested, double tested, definitely a faulty cell. And in fact we managed to borrow a cell charger, so this is a special charger uh, that's, that sells individual 3 volt cells. Tried this and no, this one cell, faulty. So, sadly we had to send it back. And of course because it's a lithium battery it has to be shipped not air freighted so it takes weeks to get back to the vendor and it will take weeks once more to get it out and of course as you can see we've left already so the batteries never worked out. <laughs>